Hey guys, Rob Murphy from Lister Healing Choices here. Now today we're carrying on with our NLP presuppositions. So, can you believe it? We're up to number 10, which is people make the best choice available to them. People make the best choice available to them at any given time. Now that might not sit well with you to think about it right now. Because how could that idiot make that stupid choice? Now whether the choice made is negative or positive, it's the best choice available to that person, to them at any given time, any given circumstance. If offered a better choice, they would take it. They make their choice based on their own unique personal experiences. If their choice is incorrect or strange from another's point of view, it's an indication of the best choice they have. So with their own map of the world, which we'll get into in the next one, they perceive this to be the best choice that they're faced with at that moment. So in making that choice, they cannot foresee any adverse circumstances or consequences, if any. So otherwise they would refrain from making that choice. Like obviously, if it's going to cause disaster, people would not make that choice. So people make a bad choice because they're not aware that a better choice is available. So if given a better choice, they would take it. The more choice they have, the more they're able to adopt appropriate behaviours or deal with any situations and achieve whatever their goals are. However, the choices available to them have to be suitable and acceptable for them to be considered as an additional option. Think about a child. Now a child lacks some of the more adult thinking strategies that we employ, that we grow up with. For a child, absolutely, jumping off a bridge might seem like a logical choice, the best choice that's available to them. That's going to be fun, I'm an invincible little kid who hasn't got a reference level for this, so off the bridge I go. While an adult obviously looks at it and goes, you would have to be stupid to do that. I'm going to need a parachute, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need that, blah, blah, blah. All of these things. So they can still do it, but they're making a better choice about the equipment used for that situation. Well, the kid might just, off they go. Now, I'm not saying all kids are stupid like that, but <laughs> it's just an example. Another one might be that you've grown up with an alcoholic family. Choosing that bottle of alcohol is all that you know, rather than, hold on, I've got to work tomorrow or I've got an important test or something on tomorrow, maybe I'll refrain from drinking for a night and I'll do better in my test. But to some people that choice just doesn't exist because of their background, their behaviours, their environment that they've grown up with. Because every one of us has a choice in dealing with problems, situations and other people's behaviour. So what in someone else's anger triggers you? What do you do? Do you get angry at them as well because you've grown up and the only choice that seems available is to meet force with force? Or do you shy away from them or avoid them completely? We naturally identify the best choice to achieve the desired outcome. So what is the outcome in that situation? So if someone's raging, do you just want them to shut up? Would hitting them be the best option in that situation? that you perceive to be. So knowing that other people's behavior, however unusual or unpleasant it may be, reflects the best choice that they perceive available to them at that point in time as well. We can then change our and their behavior by recognizing more and better choices. So for that angry person, what are they yelling about? What would get them to stop yelling? What would soothe them a little bit? Get them out of that state. Pull them right out of that. And make them realize that there is a better choice. Because yelling at people doesn't really get them to comply a lot of the time. It might for that short, sharp, instant bit. But sooner or later, people become immune to being yelled at. <laughs> it's <laughs> quite a hilarious thing to watch. Like you can see kids that grow up in households where there's a lot of yelling and the teacher's yelling at them and they're just cool rather than actually taking the teacher seriously because they're just used to it that's the choice it's 
work for the teacher beforehand, so they see that as the best choice, and they're frustrated with that child. So they yell at them, and the child's choice is to go, it's just someone being loud again, rather than actually paying attention to whatever the teacher's saying. But if the teacher comes at them in a much calmer way, the child will make a better choice on the teacher's recommendation. Here's another option there, another example of that. But anyway guys, what choices do you make that are the best ones available to you? And if you reflect on things, how could they have gone a little bit differently? How could they have ended up at that desired goal? A lot more efficiently, a lot more easily. And what could you do in the future, having learned that now, that's gonna make things a lot easier in the future for you? But anyway guys, that is people making the best choice that's available to them. I'm Robert Murphy, and I'll see you in the next video.